<coughs> All right, so uh, the intercept and Glenn Greenwald have something called. Uh, they have a new. Uh, they have a new thing. Uh, I forget. Uh, I forget what it's called. I just had it and then I blanked. And as a matter of fact, it's funny because I I just literally stopped watching just a second uh, a few seconds ago. Um, a uh, it was it's four days old I think if I remember correctly, but I can't remember. Oh, systems update. That's that's what it's called. So, <clears throat> this one is dealing with, uh, with China and how uh, the West, and, and in particular the U.S., is viewing China. Uh, uh, China is a competitor. There's no, uh, there's no uh, doubt about that. On the economic, uh, political, and social uh, as well as military front, China is definitely a competitor. It is a, is it an adversary? No, China is no adversary. Uh, as a matter of fact, China works uh, uh, works for the works in favor of the oligarchy, the wealthy, uh, the lazy, wealthy, entitled. Uh, monsters like uh, like Jamie Dimon, like uh, uh, like uh, Google, like uh, uh, GM, uh, Ford, uh, Amazon, uh, uh, the uh, the big uh, Walmart, uh. uh just about uh, almost everything, inc including a lot of manufacturing that has been moved over to there. <clears throat> so China is uh, is working with it, but here's the crucial point: China used the bait of okay, you can come over here, you can exploit the shit out of uh, of uh, the Chinese government has used the bait of. You can explore, exploit the shit out of uh, the people here, and we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna give you a lot of uh, flack for it. Uh, in turn, in return for that, you give us, uh, you give us uh, a technology. Uh, uh, you, you give us technology. We'll give you favorable, uh, uh, favorable conditions for you to uh, basically. Uh, make insane amounts of money uh, and so on and so forth uh, so that's what uh, so basically that's what China is being accused of doing but understand China didn't send uh, uh, military force China didn't put guns to these people's heads uh, China all China did was say hey we're going to bribe you to come over here by giving you all these favorable conditions so you can uh, make uh, a ton of money uh, beyond what, uh, what you were capable of doing before. Uh, and you'll get, uh, and you'll be insanely, uh, ridiculously, uh, astronomically, stupidly uh, wealthy. And you'll have more uh, and you'll uh, uh, use that to get more uh, political and social and economic and all the other factors uh, back in uh, back in your country. That's it. So in a court uh, court of law, uh, can you use excuse? I was bribed, so I did it. No, that doesn't work in a court. Of, uh, well, it's not supposed to work in a court of law, but we know contrary. To uh, contrary to what we believe that it's not supposed to work, it does. So, if you have money and you're a and you're a CEO or or you're a wealthy, you're a Vanderbilt or you're a Rockefeller or you're a Jeffrey Bezos or or Mark Zuckerberg or uh, the guy that uh, that owns uh, 
uh, that started Victoria's Secret, um, and and all these are all these others. That uh, it doesn't actually apply to them or those who are connected politically or in other influential ways. It doesn't work in a court of law. You or I do try to say we were bribed. No, not so much. So all this, all this uh, China is such so, so bad and so on and so forth. It, it all comes down to uh, it all comes down to this whole thing of China is taking our manufacturing away. China is taking our jobs away, and then they uh, put in oh China is so repressive against their people, the Uyghurs, this and that. Never mind all the repression and oppression uh, that the uh, that the U.S. and Western governments do to their own domestic populations, such as the indigenous, the native indigenous of North America, which Canada uh, uh, is just as bad, if not if if not as bad as the U.S. So, uh, you know, uh, there are supposed to be these sovereign nations of the indigenous. Well, in the, there's supposed to be treaties, but every treaty has been broken. And all these laws and rules and, and so on and so forth. And, and the notion of sovereignty doesn't really exist because, because if a white uh, person or a wealthy person in the US decides they want uh, they want something or they want to do go right ahead doesn't even matter if you if you're not even from the US if you're from can if you're a Canadian company you can do it yeah, yeah. so uh, and then there's the issue of uh, of black Americans and how they have been killed and repressed and suppressed. Yeah. Or the Chinese. Or Asians like me. Or the uh, or uh, the quote unquote Latinos. Or Mexicans. Or you know brown people uh, in general. Or the poor white people. Who, uh, who have only a cosmetic. Uh, cosmetic. And uh, uh, cosmetic symbol, uh, symbolistic uh, privilege, which is uh, which is laughable because uh, they're almost uh, uh, the white, uh, the real, uh, the poor white, which are getting even larger, by the way, are almost as bad uh, in as bad of a condition economically, socially, and all that other stuff. So okay, so we'll know, uh, we'll forget all about. All the oppressions that they have done, or the oppressions that the U.S., the Brits, uh, British, uh, and other Western countries have done, like particularly, like let's take for instance Hong Kong, how British had control of Hong Kong for over hundred years, and how every time the uh, Chinese that lived there uh, started to uh, get uh, upset about the injustices, they would send out the uh, uh, they would send out the police. Uh, their police and start uh, killing and murdering them in the streets uh, or beating them or you know or the or, or never mind the rapes that happen constantly or the uh, or the whites going uh, going around uh, knocking down Chinese uh, people who are trying to make uh, make a living uh, destroying their uh, property or destroying their uh, their uh, uh, little businesses. Uh, oh yeah, never mind all that. Never, never mind the fact it happened in the Philippines, which the U.S. again was involved with. And by the way, U.S. was heavily involved in uh, in in uh, Hong Kong. Oh, and never mind how in South Korea, how again, uh, white people or American. Uh, American soldiers, whether they be black or white or other, they can go around raping, murdering, and the same thing happened in, in, in Hong Kong. 
So, but they could no, do no wrong. Same thing in the Philippines. Same thing in Japan. Uh, same thing in uh, in Vietnam. Same thing. It's so. Let's ignore all that. Although I can't see how you can ignore all that. So, China's a repressive, uh, repressive country. You know what China is? China figured out late. By the way, I have to point this out. Uh, uh, China figured out late that being able to keep up technologically in the military front uh, might be a good idea to, you know, for self-defense, uh, for uh, taking uh, more, uh, taking more interest in what was happening outside of the country. A lesson the Japanese learned, I took it to the extreme uh, and decided, you know, during the Meiji period that, you know, uh, they've been uh, they've been racked with so much, uh, so much uh, uh, unequal and basically uh, completely fixed and rigged uh, so-called uh, uh, agreements with the Western nations that the uh, during the Meiji period uh, there was a leader of uh, of Japan who said, mm, I think we need to uh, be. I think we need to uh, quickly advance in uh, in our military, our economic, uh, economic and infrastructural uh, ways, so that uh, we uh, can uh, not only project our force, but we can uh, we can project force, but we can uh, we can use force if necessary. Of course, they of course went and. Uh, and uh, later on to invade uh, uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, uh, the Philippines, uh, uh, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia, Burma. Uh, so basically, they took, and then they went into China. Uh, you know, they also went into uh, the Korean Peninsula. Um, uh, basically, they were doing. Uh, uh, they had rapidly risen in technology, technology uh, in all fronts. Uh, they had uh, gathered up uh, economic strength, and they uh, went on a rampage to conquer. Uh, one thing, um, <clears throat> and they and they were they were in, uh, they were involved in uh, in. Parts of uh, the middle, uh, parts of the Middle East, parts of uh, of of uh, of uh, of, but not so much in the Middle East, but uh, parts of uh, of of uh, of uh, of Africa, Northern Africa, and so on and so forth. But not so much there. But the uh, the strategy was is take over and conquer uh, the countries that have. Uh, that are the quote unquote Asians that had some commonality, uh, but you know let's not treat them with uh, with any equality. Let's not uh, let's not let's do as the West West has done. Uh, going to mass uh, killing spree, uh, repression, and uh, basically uh, we are the uh, superior race. Uh, we know better, and you should just bow down to us and. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, giving the, uh, spiel of how the West was a danger. And the thing is, that was completely le legitimate because the West was a danger. They were a prior on the, uh, 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 well, they, they were, uh, but they still are a prior to the rest of the world and particularly the U.S. So let's. Forget about all, all the all the repression and everything else, and how if we want to uh, if we are to objectively look at it, the West is the worst repressive uh, and aggressive uh, elements 
in the uh, in the entirety of the world. And so another thing that China learned is that throughout the years that the West would use any thing that came out that could be construed as being negative uh, in in a moral or ethical or principled way could be used against them. Now the Chinese uh, have achieved phenomenally on all fronts, becoming the second most uh, powerful economy, the second most powerful uh, military in the world, outstripping uh, outstripping uh, Russia. <laughs> and yet, China actually has a capability right now, and it's had for some uh, some time, an ability to probe to see if they can if they can uh, do something like the Japanese did. But China hasn't gone that way. Now China is using some of the uh, uh, some of the economic uh, fuckery. That the uh, that the West, and particularly the U.S. and and uh, and and Brit uh, and the British, developed. Uh, just not as extreme, and overtly, overtly uh, in favor uh, of the Chinese, but they're still using that same. Uh, they're just using a watered down version of the economic fuckery. So, uh, that I, I totally disagree with. If you're going to start uh, the new uh, Silk Road and you're going to do economic partnership, uh, you should uh, base it on, uh, on equity and equal, equal equity. And you should actually build a social and economic partnership that serves both sides. That's... It is, however, a little bent to, um, well, more than a little bent towards uh, uh, China. But that's something that they copy pasted from uh, uh, from U.S. and British and other other Western uh, countries. Not something that they created themselves. They just took uh, what uh, what had worked and used it, which is historically what uh, all all countries have done. Um, no matter who. You see something that works? Ah, copy, paste, and redo. I mean, it goes along long lines. Don't uh, uh, recreate the wheel. So, <laughs> anyways, so uh, Glenn is doing this. So he's got one, uh, uh, two guys that he wants to bring on. Well, one of the guys he wants to bring on, and he calls him an expert, is Matt Stoller. Okay, I've done videos on him. Matt Stoller is a fucking moron. He's an absolute fucking moron. He is an unhinged, uh, unhinged fool, a dangerous fool, and for Glenn. Greenwald to bring this fucking uh, fucking asshole on and says he's a fucking expert. You know, as soon as I heard that, I stopped watching it. I was like, okay, I'm out. Fuck you, Glenn. And that's and that's how uh, everybody should look at it. Glenn covers a lot of stuff and, and he's right, but then he, then he, oh God, he fucking irritatingly uh, throws in the stuff that confuses the message he was just putting out. <coughs> like, like explaining that how it was Western uh, businesses and Western uh, wealthy uh, who were working with uh, Western politicians like the U.S. Uh, to uh, to move manufacturing and jobs out of the country into China. And then he goes on to uh, then he goes on to say that, you know, China had a great part in uh, played a huge part in in uh, moving uh, business 
uh, movie manufacturing out. Now, how the fuck does that make sense? As I said again, China didn't put uh, put the screws to them. It was the uh, it was Western companies and Western people and U.S. companies and U.S. corporations and U.S. wealthy with political uh, what with politicians who made it favorable for them to move it over, and and with uh, and with these uh, and with these so-called uh, consultants of these corporations and the wealthy uh, that were uh, pushing and advocating and lobbying to make it favorable to do that so that they make money on both ends to exploit the fuck out of uh, Chinese workers uh, to the point that, uh, you know, if, if dozens die uh, because of uh, the shoddiness of, of, of it over there, hey, that's uh, that's the price. Uh, that's the price uh, they have to pay for us bringing uh, slave uh, uh, slave wage labor over to there, and basically uh, fuck uh, and say fuck all. You you're not you're not human. You're just fucking slaves. You're just little cogs, and uh, you'll make the fucking uh, you'll make the sh uh, shit that uh, dumbass shit. We're gonna fucking uh, uh, ha uh, we're gonna make a killing back in the U.S. and uh, and, uh, and Western countries. So fuck you all. And the Chinese, that's what the, uh, ba that's the bait. And the Chinese used, uh, Chinese government used, hey, you'll give us this and this, and, uh, and you'll get, uh, you'll be able to, uh, do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, Oh, and don't uh, and don't mess with our uh, uh, with our uh, with our with our political uh, system. That's it. And what do they do? Again, the Chinese didn't put guns to their heads. Chinese didn't send tanks or planes or anything else. That's the agreement. They sat uh, around the table and said, "Oh, that is." So we'll give you this. We'll give you this. Oh yeah, uh, we'll we'll even throw the uh, throw in this. Yeah, I, we can see it. So we'll do this in favor. That's what the Chinese did, and that's uh, and that's why they moved on. And so, uh, as I said, in a court of law, I was bribed. Uh, shouldn't work, but it does. If you're uh, if you're an oligarch, if you're wealthy, if you're uh, part of the uh, criminal uh, high criminals of business and and Paul uh, and and Paul and actually you know what we should just throw it all out because it's not business and and uh, political system it's one and the same we got a bunch of uh, a bunch of self-proclaimed uh, nobility and aristocrats uh, Deciding they're going to be, uh, they're going to be uh, rulers and dictators, and fuck all, you have to live by it. That's basically what it comes down to. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn can be very insightful. But he can be fucking obtuse as a motherfucker. He can be dumb as a motherfucker when it comes to certain things. And the thing is, is he's he talks a good game, but he's but he also still has that liberal, uh, almost neoliberal look at uh, uh, certain issues. Um, fun social issues. I completely agree with him. Uh, we shouldn't be uh, telling uh, men and women that they can't uh, they can't marry another woman or marry another man or have sex with another man or sex with another woman, or you can't uh, get a, uh, 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 you can't get surgery to uh, change your gender, and so on and so forth. I completely agree with him on that. I agree with him on the. Uh, uh, on the 
uh, about the racism. I agree with him. But when it comes to when it comes to uh, uh, to some of uh, some of the political uh, nonsense, he's he's just as neoliberal. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, he, he, I mean, even he admits that on that on the, uh, on on the uh, on the video I was just talking about. It's like, how can you not see it? And he and he does it, and it's like, and what's irritating is that he doesn't make the connections, or refuses to make the connections. That he actually talks about himself. And the fact that he brings on Matt Stoller and calls him a fucking expert it, it is, is beyond uh, beyond rational. It, it, it's, uh, I'm sorry, beyond irrational. This is why, this is why I, I talk about, uh, this is why I talk about these ones that portray themselves as being left, you know. But they also say, well, well, I'm not, I don't like to put labels. But you know, it's like, he's right in that. It, it's, it, it's, we should be talking about uh, a common natural uh, sense. And being truthful, but the thing is, is uh, Glenn, uh, I like a lot of his reporting, but he also can skew a lot of crap. This is why I like the gray zone uh, so much, because they uh, they rarely ever uh, uh, contradict themselves, and they rarely ever uh, uh, try to do mental gymnastics. Glenn, unfortunately, still has a tendency to do mental gymnastics. Um, so, but you know, at least with uh, Glenn, it's uh, it's on a uh, on a smaller spectrum where he does the mental gymnastics. Still, it, it's still uh, it's still that's a that's still dangerous. And this is why I don't like liberals. This is also why I don't like, uh, like when my father uh, says to me, well, that's just the way it is. Or how, you know, like I had a dif uh, discussion with my father. He's like, I said, you know, you need to uh, uh, read Naomi Klein's Shock Doctor. You need to check out uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher uh, um, crap, I can't think of him. I think it was, I keep on getting it mixed up with Hitchens. Uh, oh, Chris Edges. Uh, you need to uh, check out Chris Edges. And I was talking to him, and it's like, well, does, do they have any, uh, do they propose any solutions? And I said, well, you know what? You need to understand uh, so that you can critically think so that you can find your own solutions. And my father was like, well, no, all I'm concerned about is do they have any uh, solutions? And I'm like, and I said, well, Chris Edges and the client talk about being informed, and then, like, if you want to deal with it, you need to go. Uh, you need to go on a uh, on a general strike. You need to. And my father's like, get stuck on this. And he's a uh, he's a, a liberal conservative, I guess. Um, but just like, that irritates the fuck out of me. And I love my father, but that irritates the fuck out of me. Because basically what you're saying is, oh, um, I, you know, uh, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I can't think for myself, um, even though I can, uh, even though I agree with, uh, a lot of the stuff that you're saying to me, I can't think for myself. And... <laughs> and I need somebody to tell me what to do. And, but unfortunately, that goes beyond just the uh, 
uh, neoliberals and the liberals and the uh, neoconservatives and and all. It's like a lot of people on the left are like that. You need somebody to tell you uh, what to do, and that's that is absolutely fr frustrating, and it's also incredibly depressing. I didn't, I didn't come to these. Uh, to the solutions uh, uh, that I talk about on my videos uh, uh, because somebody else uh, told me those are the solutions. Now, there are certain things like the, uh, like the uh, solar uh, steam, ge uh, steam generation for uh, magnified steam generation for electricity, but, you know, they wanted to use uh, they had a glass tube that they had a, a big magnifying glass that uh, shined down, and it was pumped into a an old style steam engine. But I was talking about, so I, I came up with the uh, other thing was uh, putting it uh, putting it through a uh, uh, electromagnetic turbine, using the steam to, uh, to turn the electromagnetic turbine through fins. <clears throat> so, I put that together, and then I also thought about um, about kinetic uh, gravity, uh, gravity uh, electric generation. Uh, I also thought about. Uh, then I included also putting in uh, electronic uh, devices and hooking them up to plants because I saw that I included that in. Um, I also, uh, I also uh, included, you know, because uh, I, I already knew methane uh, was, uh, it was natural gas. Uh, and the reason why natural gas has the, has that, uh, that uh, spoiled uh, rotten egg smell is because that was discovered uh, because uh, na uh, natural gas or methane was discovered during uh, mining periods. Uh, for other things, and and that it was uh, it doesn't it didn't smell, but you know if you uh, if you had an open uh, uh, open flame or something like that, it would explode, and then so uh, and then there were some other things uh, that gave uh, that gave so I don't know, which is why I talk about uh, creating uh, methane and considering how much methane is produced by the. Uh, by the livestock and what we produce, and and the and when uh, plants and animals and all sorts of other things that uh, biodegrade produce, including uh, including our plastics and other, it's like why not use that and set up the system I talk about in my other videos. So I put that in, and it's like and when you know it's like uh, why create these gigantic heavy things that cost uh, stupid amounts of money as well as time and engineering basically remaking the wheel when we could just use uh, sails that are omnidirectional which we can color at different ways uh, tri sails on a uh, and then at the base is a uh, is an electric turbine and we put those uh, and we put those in, in millions of uh, in, uh, uh, in millions of places, uh, and we don't need to. Uh, we can put it in. Uh, we can have it in people's yards. We can have it, uh, you know, um, on top of their homes. So it adds color, and while uh, and and enhances while uh, producing electricity and tie it all together. You know. And I go on to more and more and more. And the reason I come up with this is because I'm thinking for myself. I'm, I'm putting in the connections. So I make these solutions. Uh, these I propose these solutions. And this is... And all it is is being invested in... Uh, being invested... And, and uh, having uh, the initiative to have the imagination uh, of being invested in all the things I, I see around me, 
the things that I've come to uh, come to find out, and and being able to think and have an imagination, and so uh, it, the way I look at it is, yes, I think there may be some legitimacy in the idea of that people are lazy, that humans are lazy, but it's also, but as I pointed out in other 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 videos. The reason why uh, people are lazy is because we've been groomed and prepared and and uh, and uh, and propagandized and and all that other stuff from the day we're born. What we've been groomed not to uh, not to be curious. We've been groomed not to uh, want to do. We've been told that uh, you know. We've been told that. Physical labor uh, is the only measure of value when uh, that counts, or mental labor that uh, cre uh, that creates uh, that creates uh, personal wealth uh, and and innovation for a few. That we've been so it's like yeah, we are we are lazy. Because we've been uh, we've been told that that's the way we're supposed to be. So getting uh, getting through and understanding that uh, that the real work should be to have imagination, to have curiosity, uh, so that you can have uh, uh, empathy, so you can have compassion, so that you can have critical thinking. It should be the uh, jo uh, work and job that we all should. Uh, we all should be doing so that we can uh, stand together in solidarity and say no that's unacceptable that's intolerable and we won't uh, we won't allow it because we now have a concrete idea of what morality empathy is we now see the connection and understand the pervasiveness that is commonly hurting us all. But you know, I I, I did on a, on another on some other videos about how how I've been trying for some years to uh, get signatures and get uh, people to help me uh, help me uh, get the word out uh, so I can uh, so I can. Uh, run for governor but you know it's like nobody nobody has has, uh, has really uh, wanted to help they like a lot of the stuff I talk about they uh, they agree with a lot of the stuff I talk about it's like but there's they don't take in any initiative they don't have any drive because we've been the drive for our own enlightened self Preservation has been basically wiped out. And yes, it will take uh, something uh, drastic, uh, so drastic that, that we can't ignore it for us to come together and to realize that we have to, uh, we have to take immediate action. And the reason for that is because we're lazy, because we don't want to, uh, we don't want to, uh, it's because uh, what the hell is that old saying? Um, crap, I can't think of it. But basically, it means, you know, um, uh, oh, facing reality, uh, reality sucks. You know. So is it logical to say we're lazy uh, cowards? Yeah, you could even argue that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the whole point is, is oh God, this went a lot longer. Uh, the whole point is, is that we need to invest in ourselves so that we can invest in the greater. And investment starts with understanding, uh, understanding in a deep, meaningful level what it all means, and seeing the interconnectivity and understanding.
that empathy and compassion starts with understanding within ourselves. And therefore, we can then build solidarity and understand what is tolerable, what is intolerable. All right, thanks.